Hello. Not sure if I should say good morning, good night, exactly what. It's 3 a.m. in the morning, and this is Angel. Thought I would update you on a few things. We have had some pain in our shoulders, so we didn't get to do a video the last couple of days. Uh, Tammy got ready quite a few times to do her video, and just things came up. But we've been, for the most part, still very happy. Um... We had a little issue today with our busing. They're no longer doing busing for anything except medical runs. Now, before, it was just that our insurance didn't pay for anything but medical runs. But this bus, you could give them $10 and $10 for your caregiver, and they would take you anywhere within the eight counties, and then, again, the same fees to come back. Um, they ran out of funding, and so they no longer do that. And I called another place that does do this, but they want 90 up front if it's a weekday, then $2 a mile for a round trip. On the weekends, they want 180 up front, $2 a mile for a round trip. I could take a taxi a lot cheaper than that. Would it be convenient? Would it be easy? Is it always safe? It's iffy, but I always have workers with me, so I guess I'm just, we're just going to go that route until, you know, Uber comes here or in August when someone moves in that's going to have a car. But that's our update on that. I was responding to a video tonight about, is death like sleeping? And it was a very interesting video. I, I don't agree with every point they made, but it was interesting. And it reminded us of the time when we had our surgery in 2010. We were asleep probably about 16 hours for the surgery. We lost all our blood in our body three times. Whether we were revived on the table or not, I wasn't ever told. But what we remember right before we woke up in the ICU is we found ourselves in what appeared to be like you see the movies of the New York um, sewer systems where they crawl up this ladder and down the ladder to, to fix the pipes and to do all of that. And we looked down and there was this bright white like feather bed, soft and fighting looking. And we looked up and we saw a bright whiteness way up far as well. And the next thing we heard a voice. We knew it wasn't God, but we knew this was someone speaking for God. I don't know how we knew that. It was just something we knew when they spoke. And they let us know that we had done a good job, our work was finished, and we just needed to let go, drop, and be safe when we did. And he kept, his main line he would use was, let go, drop down, you are safe. So we asked him, we said, what about that bright light up there? And he said, that's a long, long, hard journey. And we said, but can we go there? And he says, yes, you can. But why not just let go, drop down, you are safe. And we sit there or hanging on to this ladder for a few minutes. We started pulling ourselves. We, we decided we, we would go on and try this. So we started, we let him know, and we started pulling ourselves up the ladder, and it was like it was getting further away. You know how you watch those movies, and it just keeps getting further away. And finally, we reached the top, but on our way up there, every so often, he'd say, it's still safe. Let go. Drop. It's not too late. And we just continued to keep going upwards. And this happened two or three times. 
and we would look down and, and sure enough it was still beautiful and and we 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 had a sense that if we fell we would be safe it, you know the drop wasn't our fear and so when we finally got to the top we realized it wasn't bright bright like a light anymore and we we reached out with one hand and we touched it and it felt like silk or a, a flower or something very soft. And we, we said to ourselves, we, we can dig through this. So we start pulling, you know, one hand after another. We're pulling all this out and it's dropping down. And um, we can still hear it. And so finally, we it's all out and we can see a light, you know, up. Like light, you know, daylight. And so we climb up, and now we're seeing white around us, but we can see the sky. And we realize at that point that we are inside a beautiful white rose, as if we are the pistol that comes up in the rose. And then we woke up in ICU. Now, as my son has, my son, John, we have three children, by the way. We've never told y'all names or ages before, but we do have three children, two sons and a daughter. Um, the son is in his late 20s, and the other son and daughter are in their early 30s. Um, so as I was told the story many times in front of my son, my youngest son, who lives up above me, he said one night, Mama, y you really tore the bottom of that rose all to pieces, but it was still beautiful. Just like you. They took the bottom of you all away, but you are still beautiful. And those words, even in our lowest point of thinking how freakish we look or and we do have low points like that. We just remember what he said. Sometimes it's our children that make us remember. Um, sometimes they're what wake us up. And we have three great children. Um, Tammy actually carried all the children. And I've only really, I, Angel, gotten to be an active part of their life since the end of 1999. And I didn't get a long time with our daughter or our oldest son. I had more time with him than the daughter to actually interact and, and, and pay honor and be their parent. I've always tried to be close. We have always put our kids, well, I can't say we've always put them first because we've screwed up like all parents. But, but since, you know, them leaving home and, and the separation and, and them becoming adults, you know, we've told them how sorry we are for the things that we did that affected them in their life. And now we try to be as honest as we possibly can with our children. And we have a great relationship with each and every one. It's a different relationship. And I, Angel, have grown to have relationships with the children. You know, I, I kind of feel like, you know, they became mine as well. Even though I realized that Tammy had them and Nicole claims to have been in the body when a couple of them were conceived, I, I still feel they're my children just as well. And I think we all feel that way. But I do think it's only fair to them to realize that they have this many people who love them. It's a different situation with the littles. They see them more as their sisters or cousins. But as far as us grown-ups, and especially the core, the core 
founders or foundering altars who were there through the children. We've had some altars that have came into the system since the children have been adults or since we've been away from them. And of course, those are not as close, but they know and we will go over our core rules with you at a different date since it is this late in the morning. But part of our core rules, the first two are no murder, no suicide. The next is that our children are always going to be part of our life. We love our children and we will do what we can to help our children. Sometimes even once they're adults, the very best answer that you can give them is no. When they're little, the very best thing you can do to parent your child is to say no. If your child likes you all the time, if you never fight with your child, I'm not sure how much parenting you're doing. Children are going to hate their parents for a moment because we are the people there to say no, to set the first boundaries they ever have in their life. And I don't want to be a child's best friend. I want to be their mother. And as they get older and they become adults, you are friends. But I'm sure all of my children have someone to fill the best friend spot in their life. They don't have someone to fill the mother spot all the time. Now, I am blessed. Holy, I am blessed. We are blessed. Blessed be by a beautiful soul who has been the mother to both of our children when we were unable to do so. And that is their Aunt Linda. And that's why that and the fact we knew her so many years when we were married and, and she felt more like our sister. And I guess the only thing that we really can't talk about very well is us, our, our MPD, our MPB. And, and though I did finally today, I, Angel, I did finally talk to her and I let her know that it had to be a part of us. That we, well, as I told her, even if, say it's in my mind, okay? Say I am one person and all these people are in my mind, they're my imagination, or they are a tumor, or they are a misfiring of my brain that makes me believe it. That belief is what kept us alive. It's what pushed us when we needed pushed. It's what gave us the strength when we needed the strength, when we didn't think we had the strength. And so to love the person that we are, even if you don't believe that it exists, know that I am a better me when I acknowledge to myself that we are we. It is us. I am a much better better singleton, which is a single person that they want, when I am allowed to be us. Many things in their lives, my children's lives, they experienced with the other parents, okay? I've been there since 1999. Tammy, as I said, had the children. She birthed the children. She took care of the children. There was a time that she needed a break. Nicole took care of the children, even though she had every rule there could be in a rule for a rule. There was times LaDonna took care of things. 
LaDonna got us into business. She she tried to get a business open. She tried to better the family. It, though, got to the point that we were never seeing the children. I, at the time, was still in the shadows. Like I said, I, I wasn't there yet, but these are the things left for us in the brain to know. And um, as the story goes, they were on their way to work one morning. It's around you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning as usual. And the kids are in the back seat and, and, and they're doing their thing. And they rode all the way to work with the full intention of going to work like any other day. And as the story goes, LaDonna found herself pretty much, as we call it, pushed meaning pushed into where she wasn't aware of what was going on the outside. She still was going on on the inside, but she was like, we don't do it anymore, and it takes more than one person now to do it. But she used to be able to block a person from knowing what was going on outside. And that day, when they got there, they called their in the employees, and this was Tammy and Nicole. They called the employees, they said, you know, you can come in today, I'll pay you for today, but your job will be helping us close down everything. And so they closed the restaurant. Now, when tax time came around, they went to LaDonna and said, you know, business taxes need to be done, you know, W-2s and everything sent out. And I can't blame LaDonna. She pretty much told them to take a flying kiss at her ass. And they actually had to go to a neighbor's, they said, who worked for the Internal Revenue Service and get her to help them. But you really can't blame LaDonna. But you can't blame Tammy and Nicole for feeling the need that they needed to grab their family back either. It's like when I came in 1999 and I finally got up the nerve and the strength that I needed to leave their father for we just were not a, a a good mix and the best thing that we had was the three children together so when I did that from what I understand they again they pushed shadowed Tammy to where she couldn't see what I was doing now I didn't know I was multiple I thought I'm just a normal woman I'm, I, I, I'm just doing this Excuse me. Bad habit, I know. Um, but, so when Tammy did find out, and when I found out I was multiple, and we all started communicating, she wasn't really happy with me. I mean, can we blame her? You know, uh, she's very religious. She believes that marriage is meant to be forever. And I had taken her away from that. No matter how much any of us realized it wasn't good for us, I had taken her away from that. And then, not only that, I had in her way of seeing it, because I allowed our daughter to go back to visit her father, I had also lost her daughter. And as she healed from that, I, Angel, chose to take Greg with us when we went to, s to see his sister for her birthday, which Tammy did want to go. It was one of her biggest ideals. She had been asked a few months prior, what did she want for Christmas? We had decided as a body, we'd want to go see her for her birthday, though it was before Christmas. But when we got there, the son decided to stay with his father. No one had custody. There was nothing we could do. So as she healed from that, though, it ended up we lost the son in her mind. Because her thing was, before we even left, are we sure we want to take the kids? What if you get up there and something goes wrong? And I guess I, Angel, made the wrong decision. But everything happens in life for a reason. There's a reason that life has turned out the way it has for us. 
over the years. But as I said, our kids are still our life and our saving grace. I mean, I, Angel, personally have prayed to God many times. If you ever see a reason to touch those, you know, to take, I can't even say it, of those children, you take me first. We've been here a long time. Some of us a lot longer in, inside. Yes, yeah, some of us are older than the body. But, uh, and we plan to be here another at least 80 years or so. We have to be in order to fulfill everything that everybody wants to do. Maybe God lets multiples live longer so we can finish what we want to do. Speaking of that, I wanted to recommend to you all a good book called Gestalt Man. Now, it is gestalt as in like the parts making the better whole. The book is about a body, a gentleman, who works in a certain department at the FBI office. And that department is known by, I forget the name, but and the thing is, there's only really two people. The person who knows about it, who does none of the work, and this one man. But when people think about the department of, they know that they have a ME, a medical examiner. They know they have their own sketch artist. They know they have all of these different things. And he was trained, and every altar he had, was trained in what they were strongest in. But they, you know, it, it, as in any book, it, it was a big organization that could afford to, you know, spend all this money every day and start teaching this person really early. And you know what I'm saying. Um, because some of us that came in were older than the body, I do believe is what made us advanced at certain things. By the time LaDonna was 11, 11 and a half, she was typing 125 words a minute. She was, you know, dictating. She was doing key punch, adding machine. So I do think in a way, or I'm not trying to brag, I'm just saying, we're looking at this. I should have turned off that monitor back there. I got to keep remembering that. Sorry, guys. I'm learning as I go. We all are. Anyway, it's late. I need to head off to bed. All the rest of them, except for my doorkeeper here, Tina. She says, hey. She said, by the way, earlier she had did the eyes. They were supposed to be green camouflage, but they've long lost their luster tonight. So we bid you farewell, and we hope you have a great rest of your night and a beautiful day tomorrow. God bless America. God bless our leaders. God bless our foreign leaders. God, we ask for peace that we may have longer on this earth to get things right, to be the type of people that you want us to be. Good night. God bless.